Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Praise God. Once again, he has blessed us with another opportunity to trust in him, to worship, and call on his name, and to be delivered from sin and death by the sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ on the cross so that we might have eternal life in him. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning knowing that you are God, that you created all that exists, and that you love us with an everlasting love, and that nothing can separate us from the love and devotion that you give to us freely because of who you are, the great I am, the God of the universe, the sovereign God, the Holy One, El Sadat. Elohim, the great, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to seek your face and to know you. Thank you for hearing this prayer. And I just ask, dear God, that today I be allowed to grow closer to you, to know you more intimately, and mature in my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, this morning our daily devotional is titled, The Brevity of Life. And it's from the book of Job, chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. <clears throat> it says, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Oh, remember that my life is wind. Mine eye shall no more see good. The eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanishes away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. Wow. Job is pretty uh, depressed. <clears throat> That's a pretty negative um, set of scriptures there where he is uh, considering how fleeting life is. And that it is inevitable for us all to die. Okay, this morning uh, we're in section two, human frailty and sinfulness. Like withering grass. That's what our life is like. Psalms 90 verses 5 through 7. It says, Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as, the sh as sheep. In the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning, it, flower, it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening, it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Hmm. The psalmist lamented the condition of humanity as he reflected on the morality and sinfulness of human humanity, he was deeply grieved. Like Job, he turned his attention to God with a profound complaint. We wither beneath your anger. We are overwhelmed by your fury. Humanity is overwhelmed by God's judgment. Humans are powerless 
against the omnipotent God who carrieth them away as with a flood. As a Psalm of Moses, it is likely this is a reference to the flood of Noah in Genesis 6.6 6, or even to the drowning of the Egyptian army in the Red Sea in Exodus 14.21-31. In both cases, God acted to judge the sinfulness, violence, and idolatry of humanity. The terrors of death swept over all humanity like an irresistible sleep. See Psalm 55, 4. The morality of humans is compared to the grass that is fresh in the morning and withers in the evening. Job 14, verses 1 through 2 declare, Mortals born of woman are of few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away like fleeting shadows. They do not endure. <clears throat> Isaiah 40 verses 6 and 7 compares the morality of humanity to the withering grass. All flesh is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. Surely the people is grass. Throughout the scripture, wicked humans are compared with withering grass. See Psalms 37 verses 1 to 2, Psalms 92 verse 7. The rich and powerful may appear strong, but they cannot resist the power of death. But the rich will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its bloom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. That's from James chapter 1 verses 10 through 11. Furthermore, all human life is little more than a vapor, a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. James was speaking of the frailty and brevity of human life and to the suddenness by which life ends. Death is literally just one breath away. In the Old Testament, human life is likened to a shadow that quickly disappears in the light. See 1 Chronicles 29, 15 and Job chapter 8, verse 9. During the years of the Black Plague, also known as the Great Mortality that swept over Europe in 1346 to 1351, it is estimated over 100 million people died, representing one-third of the continent. It was said that people of a village could rise dancing in the morning, but would be all but would all be dead by sundown. Alright, this is an insert here titled Acts of God. It says the term Acts of God is often used to speak of an instance of uncontrollable natural forces in operation. There are several such historical events that qualify. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79 destroyed several Roman cities and killed thousands of people. On April 18, 1906, a massive earthquake shook the city of San Francisco, California and resulting fires burned for days and consumed almost 500 city blocks. The earthquake and fire killed an estimate 3,000 people 
and left the half and left half of the city 400,000 residents homeless. On December 26, 2004, a 9.1 magnitude earthquake in the Indian Ocean caused a massive tsunami that swept the shores of Asia and Africa, killing almost 230,000 people. Such events leave us profoundly shaken and questioning the purposes of God. Yes, we do wonder why God allows such calamities, but we are not privileged to his knowledge. And so we just trust in him. Section 2, Like a Sigh. Psalms 90 verses 8 through 11. It says, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for, where, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. As Moses reflected on the relationship between mortal humans and the eternal sovereign Lord, he was reminded humans are subject to divine judgment, consumed by God's anger and troubled by God's wrath. Even so, we must remember, because of the wickedness of humans, God's heart was deeply troubled and the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth. And that's in Genesis 6.6. 6. Our mortality is caused by God's response to our sinfulness, which cannot be hidden from him. See Psalms 90 verse 8. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve tried to hide their sin from God in Genesis 3 verses 9 and 10. But their disobedience resulted in the entire creation being corrupted by death. Genesis 2.17 The earth is filled with the fossilized bones of humans and creatures from ages past that testify to the reign of death. As Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt and through the wilderness, they repeatedly rebelled against God and repeatedly suffered the judgment of death. As they camped at the base of Mount Sinai, the Israelites worshipped a golden calf, the image of an Egyptian god. God's anger burned against them, and he purposed to destroy them all in Exodus 32.10. Moses interceded, and God relented. Even though God did not destroy all of them, 3,000 died that day. When the people complained, about God's provision in the wilderness, his anger was aroused, and fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. That's in Numbers 11, verse 1. When Moses sent spies into Canaan, some of the leaders spread a bad report and provoked the people to complain. Those leaders were struck down and died of a plague. 
before the Lord. Because of continued sinfulness, the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord were consumed. Humans are condemned to pass away under God's wrath. Psalms 90 verse 9. Paul declared, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people. That's in Romans 1.18. And the wages of sin is death. Even the greatest of humans with all of their wealth, strength, exploits, and glory will be remembered only as a tale that is told. That's from Psalms 90 verse 9. The ancient Hebrew phrase is better translated as we bring our years to an end like a sigh. The point is that all humans, great and small, will breathe their last breath with a whisper. God is unrelenting in exposing human sin. We might try to cover up our shame by keeping our sin secret, but God has declared, My eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from me, nor is their sin concealed from my eyes. I will repay them double for their wickedness and their sin. And that's from Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. King David could not conceal his adultery and murder from God. 2 Samuel 12, verses 1 through 14. Nor could Ananias and Sapphira secretly defraud the Holy Spirit. That's Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. The Apostle John saw a vision of God sitting on a great white throne. Revelations 20, 11. Even though everyone on the earth and in the heavens fled from God's presence, there was no place to hide. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. The dead, great and small, were summoned to stand before the great white throne. And God judged them all according to what they had done. In Psalms 90 and 10, Moses again compared the brevity of human life against the eternal nature of the living God. The human lifespan is severity to 80 years and life is full of toil and trouble. Moses died at 120 years old, and his eye was not dim, nor his natural forces abated. That's from Deuteronomy 34, 7. Even in good health, humans cannot evade death. The genealogy of Genesis 5 records ancient humans were exceptionally long-lived, with Methuselah living to be 969. Even so, all of these long-lived men were mortal. The phrase, and he died, occurs again.
again and again in Genesis 5. Moses said, our years quickly pass, and we fly away. Psalms 90 verse 10. The phrase fly away is not suggesting, suggesting humans fly away to heaven. Dead humans are powerless to deliver themselves from the grave. Rather, the phrase fly away speaks to the transcend of human life, as in Job 20, verses 7 and 8. He perishes forever. He flies away like a dream. In other words, in death, humans become memories which quickly fade away. See Luke 11:44. It is determined for one's men to die, and then the judgment. We have to reconcile ourselves with the fact that we must die. We live, and then we die, and there's the judgment. Keeping the judgment in mind, our life should be devoted and dedicated to serving the one true God so that on that day, he can declare that we have done well and been good and faithful to our God. That is my desire, to walk faithfully before God, knowing that the day of judgment is coming where I will account for all the decisions that I make. And so, I put my trust in God, that He will lead and guide me to do His will so that I don't have to answer for the sin that I will commit. My sin is tossed away because I believe in Jesus Christ. It's already judged. It's not in my record because God has declared me righteous by the blood of his son. So my faith saves me. And my devotion to God reconciles me to him so that I have an intimate relationship with him. I thank you for your time this morning. I pray that the lesson that we study today gives you motivation to draw close to God, to know Him intimately as your Creator, your Father, and your Lord. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.